Russian military analyst and Constantinople observer Vlad Shlepchenko spoke about the real state of affairs in Ukraine at the front. According to him, Russia's adversary not only did not become weaker, but also strengthened in some components. A breakthrough of the front should not be expected. Tsargrad military observer Vlad Shlepchenko noted that, contrary to the headlines of American newspapers, Ukraine is not as weak as many would like to think. The army has the military potential to continue conducting military operations. In addition, Kiev is even increasing it. This is happening due to the transition to drones and expanded mobilization. The enemy also learned asymmetrical methods of responding to Russian actions. The columnist notes that American newspapers that write about the plight of the Ukrainian army work for the Democratic Party, which is attacking Republicans before the U.S. presidential elections. Their goal is to unfreeze military aid packages to Kiev, which were blocked in the fall of 2023. At the same time, the analyst points out that in American society, the wave of support for Ukraine has already faded. As for forecasts for a military conflict, there is no point in expecting Ukraine to collapse this or next year. In addition, more significant processes are possible in political terms. In particular, after the U.S. presidential elections, the situation may change greatly in favor of Ukraine. I would honestly not expect Ukraine to collapse this year or next year. Closer to autumn, another turn is possible, which few people are talking about now. The fact is that the United States can unblock military assistance to Ukraine. The Ukrainian armed forces will receive more powerful long-range systems and increase attacks on our territory, already on our rear. Why is this option possible? Because it makes sense within the American political process. The aid itself was frozen last fall as part of the struggle between the Democratic and Republican parties. If Trump wins, then this factor goes away. Why continue to starve the American military-industrial complex and deprive it of the opportunity to earn additional income if the ultimate goal of the struggle for power for the White House and the overthrow of Biden and his entourage has already been accomplished, notes Vlad Shlepchenko. The Observer also notes that the conflict in Ukraine will last at least until 2025. In addition, there is a possibility that hostilities will continue in 2026 to 27. The conflict will not end this year and probably will not even end in 2025, although there are already better chances there, notes Shlepchenko. Head of Ukrainian Defense Intelligence Kirillo Budanov shared some details about shooting down a Russian strategic bomber at a distance of 300 kilometers. It was a lengthy and carefully prepared operation. Ну, маєте на увазі знищення літака дальньої авіації Російської Федерації Ту-22 М3? Так. Довго чекали, готувалися, зрештою змогли. Що як? я вам на це скажу? Як це зробили чим? Можна якісь деталі розказати? Уже єдина скати літак був вражений на відстані 308 км, достатньо далеко. Ну, чи, скажімо так, плідна і довга робота дає про себе знати. Це той же, як то кажуть, прийом і ті ж засоби, які ми використовували, коли знищили в повітрі літака 50. А скільки, за даними української розвідки, таких літаків ще в росіян? Ще є, але це перше збиття літака дальньої авіації в цій війні. Саму цю операцію довго готували? Тиждень була, скажімо так, сама засідка. Угу. Чекали, коли він вийде на потрібний рубіж. Russian commander of the 59th Guard Signal Brigade, Colonel Pavel Kropotov, killed on the April 13, 2024 as a result of a Storm Shadow scalp missile strike on the headquarters in Luhansk. One of the most famous Russian propagandists, Olga Skabiva, who has been broadcasting hatred of Ukraine and the West on TV screens for a decade, gave a master class on propaganda for young students in Kaluga. She openly stated that Russian strikes on Ukraine are just a matter of interpretation and that the strike itself does not matter, only our attitude towards it. Thus, Skabiva paints a picture of Russian propaganda. All statements, regardless of the events described, must favor state interests. And there is nothing particularly secret about this. However, for the first time, we hear such a frank confession from the main mouthpiece of propaganda of the so-called Russian Federation. Не до конца имеет значение, что 
конкретно происходит. Обратите внимание, происходить может одно и то же событие, но интерпретация этого события имеет значение. Это то, что в современном мире, наверное, принято называть эпохой постправды, когда есть правда или, может быть, правды нет. Ну, то есть не важно, что был нанесен удар. Ну как, важно, но не в этом сакраментальный смысл. Важно, какое именно мы с вами или они для нас сформируют отношение к этому удару. Их интерпретация, наш удар по Харьковской области, проявление агрессии. Для нас все то, что мы сейчас делаем в Харьковской области, это создание санитарной зоны. И если мы с вами считаем себя патриотами, то лучше относиться к государственной точке зрения и работать на государство. Это тоже кто-то назовет наверняка пропагандой, но это будет пропаганда здравого смысла, пропаганда интересов твоей страны, пусть даже и агрессивное навязывание интересов твоей страны, Объективной информации не существует. Есть только информация, за которую, к сожалению, кто-то заплатил. Есть только информация, которая преследует, к огромному сожалению, чьи-то цели. Military porn at the end. Myanmar People's Defense Forces ambushed a military convoy in the town of Ayadaw in Sagang Division. Fighters seemingly armed with at least one RPG-7 per MA, 10 RPG launcher with possible MR-1 rockets and Way-81 assault rifles. Saving Private Mavic. Glory to Ukrainian defenders. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.